Hello everyone, I will be presenting the work of Lois Connor. I stumbled upon Lois Connor when I was looking for landscape photographers, as that is one of my favorite styles. Her photography captured me with its elegant panoramic black and white images. As a youngster, Connor was captivated by landscape and on the weekends took painting lessons from her next door neighbor. The family lived outside of Philadelphia and close to Longwood Gardens, where I'm sure Lois spent time roaming and painting the beautiful grounds. She attended the University of Delaware, and one of her classes was photography, which she really enjoyed. She loved trying to make things that represented what she saw and felt. She painted and tried her hand sculpting. Eventually, though, Connor decided to pursue fashion design at the Fashion Institute in New York. She continued taking photography classes, but it wasn't until one of her teachers, life photographer Philip Hausemann, asked her, What are you studying fashion design for? You're a photographer. It was, that, it was at this time in 1973 that she transferred to the Pratt Institute to major in photography. After that, she continued her studies as a graduate student at Yale. It was there that she took a course on Ming Dynasty landscape painting. The panoramas captivated her, and once she found out that the paintings were realistic, she longed to visit. In 1984, she received a Guggenheim Fellowship and finally got to China. Connor tried a variety of cameras and films before she settled on the banquet camera. This camera takes 7 by 17 negatives, which was popular for formal group photos at the start of the last century. This banquet camera weighs around 45 pounds, excluding accessories. She carries this huge camera over her shoulder to every location she visits. No wonder she had to have several arm surgeries. Setting up this camera on the tripod, loading the film, and adjusting the setting is a slow process, which can take up to a half hour or more. Viewing through the ground glass of the camera transforms the landscape upside down and backwards. It becomes very abstract. Connor embraces the slow process involved with the use of this camera, saying, It allows me to take time purposely, an extended period of time to make the photograph, and I think that's been very important to me, because my moment is a much longer moment, and like Cartier-Bresson's decisive moment, Mine is still a decisive moment, but a longer moment. So I have time for more contemplation, which is essential for being a landscape photographer of my kind. Although Connor is best known for her pictures of China, she has circled the world. The next set of slides shows some of her travels within the United States. This is one of her earliest pictures I found, which was just about the time she began exclusively using the banquet camera. She now has eight of them, but of course can only take one at a time with her. The misty, meandering stream with bare trees was so familiar to me as I grew up in the same area of Pennsylvania. Connor describes her photography as subtle, so the air can be felt in the picture, as in this case around the trees. Because her pictures aren't on the same plane, it draws one into the scene, looking for all the details and information it has to offer. This can be seen throughout her work. The framing for this picture also creates the extensions of the trees. Connor doesn't limit herself to bucolic scenes, yet there is a consistency to her work. The Baton Rouge photograph of the oncoming train in the fog, though a completely different subject, has similarities to the covered bridge stream. Both exude a sense of mystery and a need to look deeper into the picture. The photograph of Cleveland Clinic creates an optical illusion with the grate in front disguising the cars, not unlike the fog. Connor sometimes included people in her pictures, though often they were really distant. This one from Bluff, Utah, focuses on the young girl in front with another smaller girl behind her. The sharpness of the girls and the stones contrasts with the shallow depth of field in the rest of the picture. But even in this, one wants to examine more deeply the picture and the story behind it. 
The Canyon de Chile and the following rough rock slide, though different types of landscapes, have a similarity in the depiction of light and shadow. The consistency of her landscapes is not only due to her use of the banquet camera, but her developing techniques. Connor develops all her black and white negatives, so she retains rigorous artistic control over the final print. Her development process is laborious. She prepares her own paper with a liquid mix of, of salts of iron, platinum, and palladium chemicals. This mixture is brushed onto the paper in eight layers. This process sensitizes the paper to light. Once the negative is placed on the paper, it is exposed to ultraviolet light for up to eight minutes for a contact print. Then it is developed and fixed. Connor may repeat this process for days in order to get a good print. The printing process is, however, what distinguishes Connor's work with its rich tones. When Connor finally traveled to China in 1984, she fell in love with the country. Her curiosity and adventure led her on to many explorations, friendships, and return trips. Connor believes that it was in China that she really became a photographer. One of the things Connor hoped to achieve with her photography was to show landscape as culture, the history of behind, now, and what is coming. In returning so frequently to China, Connor has been able to show growth and change while retaining the subtlety and timelessness of the country. In Shanghai, 1984, there are several people on the bridge, and it requires a second look to spot them. This is often true of her photographs. Yangshou, 1985, and the following slide, Hu Tang, are examples of the many countryside scenes that Connor captured. In Hu Tang, the bicyclist in the center brings motion, as does the far right mystery figure in white off to the right. In both these pictures, the dark tones, angles, and shapes make it a really interesting shot. Ban An almost seems like a double exposure with the distant mountains. It was the extraordinary shapes of the Chinese landscape which initially drew Connor to China. This indeed seems like something out of a fairy tale. Although I don't spot any people in the picture, they seem like they are there. Typically, when Connor was out photographing, she would draw a large crowd of people standing behind watching. She would frequently turn around and find many willing to pose. The two following slides are both of Kiananmen, but 10 years apart and different vantage points. This again reveals Connor's interest in time and change. Specific to China, Connor has said, I don't think I would have been able to experience that kind of transition in any other country during my lifetime. It was very rapid, what I'm trying to reveal through photography in a deliberate yet subtle way is a sense of history. I would like my photographs to describe my relationship between the tangible and the imagined, between fact and fiction. Connor used rooftops to her advantage and has many photographs of rooftops or photographs from rooftops. Longshan is looking down on the rooftops, but she may well have been standing on another roof. The angles of the rooftop contrast it with the cultivated hillside, the stairway climbing up the ladder, and with the ladder lying on its side, certainly make it a spot to explore. It would be interesting to see a photograph from that spot now to see how it has changed. Rooftops are often overlooked but can show quite a different view than a shot from below, as shown in the Royal Meriden Hotel. Connor took, Connor took photos of rooftops around the world. One of the most fascinating aspects of China to Lois Connor was the lotus, represented by the next six slides. For Connor, photographing the lotus was like being in love. She never wanted to stop. There, certain, there could never be enough time to capture all the possibilities. Her lotus pictures are a contrast in life cycle bloom to wilted stem.
These photos show the lotus in various states. Some are glossy and glistening, like the sea of good fortunes. Others show the stems of the lotus dancing and reflecting about the water as an ab as abstract design. The lotus under ice sweeps with swirls of ice capturing leaves and stems. Connor felt that even the dying lotus had energy left in it and remained connected. As you may have noticed, none of the slides shown were vertical or in color, as her primary work is in fact black and white and horizontal. She did, however, use the banquet camera for some vertical photography. This was much more difficult with many more shots not turning out. This slide shows two uh, black and whites, the twisted tree in the Bronx unfurls like a Chinese scroll. The Lashan Buddha, which is my favorite picture of all, is really very detailed. The middle shows a close-up uh, of it. It's difficult to see in this slideshow, but online you can zoom in and really see the details. It's absolutely incredible. I hope that some of you will take the time to go look at some more of Lois Connor's work. I think it's really fascinating. Thank you for listening.